Yo, everybody, welcome back to Beyond the Beat. I'm delighted to have Ron Lynch, Chief Engineer at Technicolor Canada, with us today. He's going to be talking about normaling the Bantam Patch Bay and how to do it. Uh, it's an AVP Patch Bay. This is a very essential video if you want to understand how a professional recording studio is wired. So please uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, and here he is, Ron Lynch, talking about normaling a patch bay. Okay. All right. Hi, Ron. What Hi, are you? What are you up to? <laughs> what am I up to? Well, more about normals on patch bays. As okay. you can see, um, all of our patch bays have uh, two rows of forty-eight patch points, and typically the way it works is uh, an output of a device would be on the top row, like say the output of a preamplifier, and then the bottom row would be something that would be an input. So it might be the input to the console. Outputs at the top, inputs on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you want to have the signal already connected without having to use a patch cord. So for instance, if you had a mic pre number four out here and you wanted to go to console input number 17 down here, you would like to be able to have that connection take place without having to use a patch cord. And the way we achieve that is by having normals in the patch bay. The uh, normal is a signal that is, it's a jumper that, that's done in the back of the patch bay so that those patch points are joined to each other if nothing is plugged in to the patch bay itself. What makes it interesting is that if you decide that you want to have that signal go somewhere else instead, you can use a patch cord, go into the output of the top and put the other end of that patch cord into any other input on the bottom row or another part, patch bay. Um, when you do that, the jumpering that you did behind can have various states uh, that you can pre-program in advance. Um, what we're talking about when we're doing these jumpers between the patch bays, between the patch rows, is it's called normaling. And um, there are three types of normals you can have. One is a full normal, another is called a half normal, and then the third option is no normal. Um, okay, what does that mean? A full normal means that if you have a, a normal connecting these, this vertical set of point, patch points, uh, if they are normal together, if it's full normal, if you were to plug into the output here, that would break the normal signal going to the bottom. And conversely, if you were to plug into the bottom row with a patch cord, that would also break the signal flow, the automatic signal flow from the top row to the bottom row. Mm -hmm. That's full normal. And what would that, what would be a common use for a full normal? Uh, a full normal we use for AES signals because AES signals cannot be malted to more than one destination, and also for microphones. If um, you have a microphone on the top row and it's going, it's normal to a mic pre on the bottom row, if you decide that you want to actually go to a different mic pre somewhere else with a patch cord, mm -hmm. you don't want to have that mic pre still connected mm -hmm. uh, with, the, uh, with a normal because that will then uh, have two mic pre's loading your microphone, which is not good for it. Uh, it would be bad for the they, mic if phantom power was on or something. Well, like that. There, there's there's phantom issues. You'd be mixing phantoms together. That's, but uh, sound wise, audio wise, the impedance would be double loading the uh, microphone. Every microphone preamp has a, an impedance to it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's matched to the type of impedance that the microphone has. And if you end up having two uh, microphone preamps connected to one microphone, it's double loaded, and it could and probably would lead to signal loss, signal amplitude loss, and possibly distortion, and perhaps frequency response issues as well. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why you want to use a full normal. Mm -hmm. um, that is that if you put a patch cord in anywhere, you've just broken the connection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes though, you don't need to f totally break the connection. For instance, if um, this was a mix output on the top row, 
and you have it normal to your monitor control input on the bottom row, normally you want to always have that available, that you can always just listen to your mix um, without having to use a patch cord. So you would want to normal that. But in this case, you could get away with doing what's called half normal. Mm -hmm. With a half normal, the, the same still happens when you plug something into the input at the bottom. If you plug a patch cord into the bottom row of a half normal, you will break the normal signal connection. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that goes into that bottom row is what's on the other end of that patch cord. Mm -hmm. The top row will no longer connect. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's still the, the same for both half normal and full normal. But with half normal, if you were to patch something into the output of that uh, bus, it does not break the, the connection to the jack below it. Mm -hmm. That's still connected. So you could still have your mix out going to your monitor input mm -hmm. without being affected when you plug into the top. And then you could take this patch cord and you could plug it into um, the input of a recorder somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, and everybody will be happy. Yeah. Um, so that's why we do half normals and full normals. Mm -hmm. And then there are cases where what's on the top row really doesn't automatically, you don't want it to automatically connect to what's on the bottom row. Um, they're just two different things altogether. And that, that happens a lot in patch bay wiring. So in that case, you would just have no normals. Mm -hmm. um, that is, there's no automatic connections anywhere. Every single signal routing that you do on your patch bay is going to be done with a patch cord, mm -hmm. going from an output to an input somewhere. Mm -hmm. And how do you achieve those normals? Uh, the normaling in the back of a patch bay. Um, we were looking at, earlier at um, hardwired uh, normals uh, and how they're done. This uh, is a more modern type patch bay that has programmable normals uh, on the back of the patch bay. Uh, what you see here is for the 48 connectors going across the front, there's 48 cards here with two connectors each. One connector is the signal that goes to the top row of the patch bay and the other connector goes to the bottom row. And there's 48 of these. So we have the option on each of these cards to use <laughs> little tiny jumpers. I mean, they are tiny. Uh, I'll put that there, you'll see how tiny it is. There's two holes in the bottom uh, and there's a bar that joins the two holes together. So what that is, it's basically a jumper that you can put onto there's, you see at the top here, these, these black <laughs> headers, as they're called, have a bunch of gold contacts sticking out, just pins sticking out. And what we're able to do is take one of these jumpers that has the two holes and the join between them and push it over two of those pins. And that joins those pins together. Mm. Um, no soldering, no wiring. Mm just simply doing jumpers. Wow, and, um, smart. So what we do is there, we have um, a cheat sheet that uh, gives us a pattern for, if we want to do full normals, we would do the jumpers like this. Mm. If we want to do half normals, we would do jumpers like this. And if we want to do no normals, we would do jumpers, like almost no jumpers, <laughs> like this. Wow. Um, I, I won't bother showing you how tedious it is doing that. But you but can see that some of these have the jumpers in place here. We've already uh, normaled up the first 16 uh, because those are our mic pre-amplifier outputs mm -hmm. going into our the line inputs of our Pro Tools system. Mm -hmm. And um, that's because it's a music recording studio. That's going to be the configuration for most recordings. Uh, there will very rarely be a need to use a patch cord. Uh, to patch the mic pre into the recording system. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have half normals there. And th because they're half normals, we can send those preamplifiers to other parts of the patch bay at the same time. Mm 
Um, to hit a piece of gear or yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Um, so there's some dots, uh, there's some plastic uh, indicators that go onto these patch bays. What are they for? Okay. Um, if you look between the rows, you can see there's a bunch of green dots still left on, on the face of this um, patch bay. Um, th this company, AVP, that manufactures these patch bays has a very clever color coding system for these little plastic, uh, they're just a little plastic insert mm -hmm. that goes into the into a hole in the face of the patch bay. Mm -hmm. And we have a range of colors mm -hmm. that we can plug into those little holes and it's a secret decoding mm -hmm. of what's going on behind the patch bay. What's the secret? Yes, the secret is Roger wants to have the door open, I think. Oh, <laughs> the secret is? <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt yeah. your uh, Here. big teaching yeah. effort. Yeah. Right? Here's, here's a half normal walking into the studio right now. <laughs> Only half. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, where were we? <laughs> um, we have uh, the ability with these uh, various colors to give the user an indication of what type of normaling is existing between the top and bottom patch. Uh, points mm -hmm. uh, all across the patch bay um, and the color recommended color scheme that uh, ADP has come up with would t have us with a green dot tells us that there's no normal at all mm -hmm. if it's a red dot it's a full normal mm -hmm. and if it's a yellow dot it'll be a half normal mm -hmm. so when you're going about changing the patching on your patch bay, you'll know in advance what's going on behind and whether you even need to use a patch cord at all to get to that point. Excellent. Well, thanks for watching that really uh, clear and uh, informative video that Ron put together for us. Um, thanks again, Ron, for doing that. And guys, again, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and uh, leave a comment below. All right, stay tuned for more videos here at Beyond the Beat.